Welcome back to another episode of Cigar Talk. I'm your host, Rob Jones. We got Brian Falconer on the show as the co-host. How are you doing, bro? Man, I'm doing good. Doing good. Hey, you got to get that up there close. Doing good. There doing we good, go. Bro. Hey, man, we're doing something completely different. We're recording out on the patio. We're smoking cigars. We're drinking bourbon, as always. With Larry. And Larry's over here smoking and drinking <laughs> as well. <laughs> So, dude, it's been a crazy uh, last two weeks for me. Uh, I, you know, it's been so crazy, I haven't even talked to you that much. It snowed in hell. <laughs> <laughs> so, it was you, a snowstorm in hell. Dude, I, I went to TPE in uh-huh. Vegas. Mm-hmm. I come back, boom, it <laughs> snows. We're pretty much, you know, the dude, I 20 was locked down. Oh, because there was too many accidents, man. Well, that's because Folks, people shouldn't even be out, out there. there, first of all. You know what I mean? Yeah. And so, Especially anyway. Especially text dot say, don't drive on the highway. Right. Yeah. <laughs> on the website, it says, unless it's an emergency, emergency. don't be out there. That's and good. what do people do? Go out there. Right. In Texas, we don't know how to drive on the ice. We don't know. How, nobody should. I don't even know if anybody <laughs> they, knows. They don't know how to drive on water. Right. <laughs> when it rains. So let no, alone ice and no, snow. No. <laughs> they don't know how to drive on dry pavement. Dry right. pavement either. Stop does not mean stop. It means just look. Mm-hmm. <laughs> what? Wait a minute. But anyway. Hey, so let's tell everybody what we're smoking. Oh, you don't know. You can't because that's a secret stick. Yeah. No, no, no. It can't be. It's not, it's not, that's not released yet. I got you. So I'm hiding it. I'm smoking a Tabanero Sun Grown. <laughs> We'll tell you what Brian's smoking next week. Yep. And I came with my Amazon basin. And is that mine? <laughs> yes, yours. Okay, thank you. Here's mine right here with my Amazon thank basin. Thank you, thank you, thank you. You got a whole bundle. Yeah. I didn't get a bundle. I bought half a box. Nice. <laughs> now, where, or should I say, which Amazon basins are these? Are these the new, the new release? Uh-huh. Now, is it still the same blend? It's still. Have you have you smoked them? I've smoked one. And, and how was it? It was good, man. It was it was <laughs> the first Amazon basins I smoked took me to a different level. It's just it, it was a different smoke. This is trying to get there. Yeah, it's trying to get there. It's still a good stick. It's still a good smoke. But that first, it's not. Now, it's, let, it's let like when they this. say with a crackhead, the first time they smoke crack. It's they the, chase yeah. it from there, and it's never the same. <laughs> it's never the same. But, but that's kind of my question, though, is if because, like, you know, for me, I compared to like, you know, how much I used to just be in love with the LFD Cat yes, Six, yes, and sir. I've gone back and smoked those now, and they're not as good. Mm-hmm. And I don't know if it's the blend or if I don't know if it's my palate has matured and that no longer does it for me. Got gotcha. you. You know what I'm saying? And I, that may be what's going on with me because it, it was such a long break. It's been since a long because I, I think yeah. those came out like in 2016. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Maybe is and that then, right? Yep. And then the one that I got from Zeka, which was the pre-release, it's still in the uh, in the humidor. I haven't even touched that. So with these, it's like I know what I had, and it's trying to get there, but it really ain't. It's not. It's not there. It's not there. But it's a good stick. It's still a good stick. That's all I got to say. It's still a good stick. It's not the great stick that I had, but it's a good stick. Well, I mean, it, it could be the great stick, but it also could be that your palate has changed. evolved. Mm-hmm. You know, I like to say mature, you know, because I don't get to use that word in you, reference to myself very often. At all. You know, that's not really one of my at strong all. suits. At all. You know. Just like the pictures you sent back from freaking TV. You and them two dudes, man. <laughs> <laughs> what was up with that? Okay, you okay. Because I've, I've had a lot of people ask me, who you what advertising? the hell? You was advertising oh, Chip so and Dale, here's, not Chip and Dale. Here's, here's the deal. <laughs> Before I went, uh huh. you know, I've been married for 26 yes. years. I got a great wife. And, this- and I said to her, hey, hon, when I go to Vegas, <laughs> you care if I get my picture made with like those dancers mm-hmm. that are on the street? And she was like, yeah, 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 that's fine. So I thought it would be funny <laughs> to do that. And I sent that to her. And she was just like, oh, my God. <laughs> when I saw that, my wife was right next to me. And she's like, why? I said, let me explain something to you. I said, he asked his wife, could he take pictures with the ladies? And she said, yeah. I said, this is his asshole. <laughs> I said, thank you. <laughs> and she just looked at it and just shook her head. I said, that's Rob, That's man. pretty much spot that's on. That's Rob, And, you man. know, the funny thing is, I mean, first of all, those dudes were like six foot five. Damn. So they, they dug were, down for you. They, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they were ripped, and you know they didn't have shirts on. Yeah. They had cowboy boots on, cowboy hats, and they were like all these girls walking by. It's like, hey, come get your picture made. We're dancers at so and so, you know. And 
they didn't weren't you? Ta- they weren't getting any takers. Oh. And I and I walked up and I was like, man, y'all's game is weak. <laughs> I said, but I'll do a picture with I do you. Pitch you with and you. they said, hey, we can do a homie picture. And I said. Not homo, <laughs> homie, <laughs> homie. So, so anyway, and the cool thing was, I mean, and what I love about you know, I love meeting people. Yeah, is in that funny trend, and they were hilarious. <laughs> they they thought it was a riot that I jumped in. Did you just hear him saying that funny trend? Then he stopped. <laughs> so, but anyway, uh, the guy in the black hat. I was like, yeah, we're here for the TPE. I do a cigar show uh-huh. and blah, blah, blah. And he was like, oh, man, my dad loves cigars. Today's his birthday. Uh, I whipped out cigars and said, tell your dad, dad happy, happy birthday. birthday. That's what it's about. Right. That's the community. And I mean, <laughs> you know, even though I did that as a joke, there's always something good coming oh, yeah. from stuff. Oh, yes. You know what I mean? Oh, yes. Oh, yes. So it, it was, a, it was so, a lot of fun. Now, enlighten us on why you took a picture with your shirt off. <laughs> with my shirt on? It's off. With those guys. I didn't have it off. You, I saw a picture. There was a picture of it raised up, yeah. but not off. <laughs> it was like, damn, that picture got bright. <laughs> <laughs> well, I was afraid the lighting was too dark, so, you know, I wanted to do what I wanted I to like, contribute. What is he doing? I was like, but that's Rob. That's mm. Rob. Mm. I can Girl. see Tim in the background. <sighs> Are you kidding? Tim paid for it. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, Tim. I'm sorry. Man. Hey, hey. When I was done, I was like, Tim, pay the man. Pay the man. Pay the man. <laughs> but hey, you know who was there with us? Who? Zeka. I saw because you had pictures with Zeka. He was there. He was taking pictures, too. <laughs> so it was, it was a oh, great time. Goodness. Dude, I'll tell you what, though. <laughs> When I came back uh-huh. from Vegas, oh, yeah, I you, slept for two days. I know. Cause I called and said, is he all right? He was being like, yeah, he just old. <laughs> He's taking a nap. He'll be up by this evening. He said he'll catch up with you this evening. I'm like, damn, me and Larry was worried about you, man. Larry was sending texts and you wouldn't answer. I'm like, what happened? <laughs> I slept 12 hours that night. I got up, came out to the studio, <laughs> smoked a cigar, and went back to bed. Wow. Yeah. He was whipped. <laughs> I was whipped. He was whipped. Now, and, and you know what whipped me the most was TPE. Mm. And and all the walking and all the carrying equipment is what really gotcha. just really put a number on me. Let you know you was in your 50s and not in, and not in high school Ooh. shape anymore. Well, you know, the thing about it is, in your mind, you're 20. Oh, hell yeah. <laughs> and, Until you do it. <laughs> and, dude, if you get an opportunity. Have you been to Vegas? Mm-mm. So if you get an opportunity, you can get a monorail pass. And you just can just rail. ride it yeah. mm-hmm. for free. Or well not you, you paid for it. But yeah. all day long, anywhere you want to go. Don't do that. It sucks. <laughs> Why? It's just because to get to the monorail, you're walking your ass off. Oh, okay. Like you think <laughs> I'm getting a, a ride. ride. Yeah, you're getting a ride after you walk about a mile <laughs> every single time you want to get on. For it. every stop you gotta walk yeah, a mile to yeah, get to I it. was I was definitely not a fan of that, and so we will not be doing that ever I got again. You. Also, the link, we stayed at the link. If you're a cigar smoker, don't stay there. It sucks. Why? No. In the bar, you can smoke cigarettes, but no cigars. Wow. I know, right? I was pissed. This shit is natural. That shit is chemical. Hey, I was asking one of the bartenders. I was like, hey, so why can't I smoke a cigar in here, but you can smoke cigarettes? He said... Cigars just smell so bad. And no, I they said, don't. No, I said cheap ones. Yeah. <laughs> I was like. Swiss of sweets. I was like, these are amazing. Mm-hmm. And so anyway, you know what? We went across the street, which was another 150 yards. <laughs> and we were hung, we hung out over at the Mirage because you could smoke cigars just damn near oh, anywhere. Yeah, that shit, it was, and it was mob owned. It was. <laughs> now, I, I will tell you this. Uh, like, you've been to airports before. Mm-hmm. And you know, like a a Seven Eleven sandwich, it's like two dollars at the airport. It's like twelve. Yeah. Well, in Vegas, it's thirty. Everywhere you go, you're like, are we in the airport? Oh my god! <laughs> I mean, it's crazy. Uh, hey, we were at TPE, and Tim was getting hungry, and he was like, "Hey, man, there's a food truck down there. I'm gonna go get a burrito." And he came back, and he was like, "Dude, a burrito is twenty dollars." Nah, bro. <laughs> nah, bro. I was like, are you hungry I'm now? I'm blue collar. <laughs> I can't do that. <laughs> I can't do it's that. Tough. Oh, it's tough. You know, for us Texas boys, 
you know, it's it's a little. I'm from Illinois, and it's still too much for me. Well, you know, I'm cheap. <laughs> I ain't cheap. I'm just I'm frugal. <laughs> I ain't frugal. I ain't, I ain't gonna spend thirty dollars on no burrito. Man. I'm sorry, that ain't happening, bro. We can go back to the Ponderosa and eat for four days. <laughs> spend thirty dollars. Right. <laughs> what? Yeah, oh, it was nah, crazy. Bro. Nah, bro. But the overall experience, it was really good. I really enjoyed it because. I got to meet a lot of people yeah. that I've known for a long time on like Instagram, Facebook, whatever. Mm-hmm. And then I met a lot of new people. Gotcha. You. Got you. And so it was it was awesome to be able to get out there and do that. It was exhausting and you know, that was my main takeaway. <laughs> it was exhausting. Next year I'm taking a wheelchair. <laughs> Motorized. <laughs> If I would have had a scooter, it'd have been even different. Yeah. <laughs> they didn't have the the rental scooters down there. I, I didn't see them. That's why I think. I, but dude, we didn't hardly see any of Vegas. Like, oh yeah, I was in the TPE just doing. We were in TPE, and because when you use the monorail, when you use the monorail, you're not on the strip. You're like in the back ways of all the hotels, so you don't see squat. Nah, see, that's that's the problem with me because coming from St. Louis, the link which is the rail, it's downtown. You get off and there are attractions right there. You know what I'm saying? You don't have to walk a million miles to get to it. No, so no, that's no. What, that's every, my mindset every, for Every it. station that it stops at, uh-huh. like at the Sahara, the Link, it's in Harris, the back. yeah, it, it's in the back, and then you have to walk through a maze like a rat <laughs> looking for cheese <laughs> to find your way to the hotel. That's that, They do that so you can... Buy a thirty dollar burrito. No, 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 because <laughs> no. you're gonna be tired and hungry. No, like, man, they man. they do that because they really just want you to use a cab, which is more money. Well, I don't. I would have spent more money. Yeah. I, I was I was happy because at one point, me and Tim went over to the uh, Sahara for an evening at their bar, and at the end of the night, I'm walking to like where the cabs are, <laughs> and Tim's like, "Oh no, nah, bro, we got the monorail." And I'm like, no, we don't. He's like, dude, the door's right here. And I'm like, all right. <laughs> so, no, the door's right there. But then you still got to walk like eight miles to get to the actual monorail. And then we finally get up wow. there. And here's the funny part, dude. You know, I don't really care if people tell me I can smoke or not smoke. I'm smoking. Yeah. Anyway, we're smoking up on the platform for the monorail. And his voice comes over the loudspeaker and is like, there's no smoking on the monorail platform or on the monorail. Please extinguish your blah, 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 blah. Uh-huh. And I, Tim was like, that's just a recording. And I was like, yeah, and I kept smoking. Anyway, the security guard came over there and we're like, hey, man, is that voice that comes on? Is that like just a recording that comes on every so often? And he's like, oh, no, they're watching you. <laughs> <laughs> they were telling you to put it out. They saw you. <laughs> Big now, brother's watching. <laughs> dude, I was smoking on the train. <laughs> I was like, we're in Vegas, you know? What stays in Vegas, what goes on stays there. Oh, I mean, we were the only ones on the cars. Uh, and, I mean, because everybody else was smarter. Smart. <laughs> <laughs> they were taking cabs. <laughs> yeah. All right, press that lighter over here, Big Larry. I, I think I might have one in my pocket, but I'm not sure. But anyway, no, it was a lot of fun. I would definitely go back again. But, you know, here's the thing. If you've never been, you don't know what you don't know. That's true. And so now I've had a little bit of education. So I'll definitely, like, do completely different in Next the time. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Next time. This was every, the first time's on you. Every, <laughs> everybody asked where you were. Yeah. I told him you don't fly, I don't fly, and I wasn't riding with you on that long of a drive. <laughs> <laughs> it's like you know, I, my 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 drive meter lasts for about eight hours. Nah, After bro. that, I'm done. I go home. It's thirteen. I go to Nebraska. It's thirteen. I'm riding, baby. One shot, take you there. You, you can probably back. make it to Vegas in about sixteen. Yeah, I do that. Man, I drove from St. Louis to Seattle. I had to because I was in the army. I went home to pick up my car. And I had I had to report back in Monday morning. So when I when I woke up Saturday morning, my grandma was like, "What you doing?" I got to go. <laughs> She's like, "What?" I said, "This is the first time driving there. I got to report eight o'clock in the morning. I'm a new boot, so I, I'm scared to death." You I'm can't like, take I, no I, I, "I ain't taking no chances. Some breakdown. I'm stuck in the middle. No, 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 no. I got to go." And she just laughed at me. I said, "I got to go. I hit the highway, twenty four hours." Right. Even though I stopped at a hotel and went to sleep and got up the next morning and ran it in. But it was just like 20, a 24-hour trip. I had to make it. 12 hours each day. 
I used done. to. I, I mean, when I was that age, I could do it, yeah. but not now. Not I, now. I, yeah, twenty four hours now. Yeah, no. I'd, I'd be like Larry. I have three or four stops <laughs> in, in route. Yeah, that, <laughs> I'm going over so and so house. I mean, I'm not going to do that to not myself. Now. Not twenty four hours. Nah, I can't do it. No I more. mean, when I was young and dumb, it was all yeah. right. Yeah. So we could do that. We could do. How's it. How's that cigar you're smoking? It is. Isn't that nice? It is. But to me, it doesn't taste like. The old one. It doesn't to me either. It doesn't. It's to me. It's like lights out better, or different. It's different. And, and, and to me, I feel like in that Vitola, I'm getting a lot of more flavors. Yeah. It's different. It's it's different. It's good. Different. It's not uh, like damn. But it, but it's not what you this? know. Yeah, it's not right. Because I saw the name and I, you know, the name. Re, re, my response is like, okay, I know what that is. Right, and you're thinking, well, we're drinking bourbon, yeah. but now that works. <laughs> it does. It does. So, and this Tabanero lights out good. I mean, boom. I got a couple of dudes on them Tabaneros mm. Mm. from uh, Illinois. They're like, man, what, what are you smoking now? I said, dude, if you ain't smoking a Tabanero, they're like, what is that? I sent them a picture. They're like, oh, we don't have that. Go online. Go online. I said, you can go to the, you can call the Leaf. He's like, your shop? I was like, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> call the Leaf. I, I, w- I was talking to somebody out in Vegas, and they were like, oh, yeah, I, I think I've smoked one of those. I got one when I was over in such and such California. I was like, nope. 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 Didn't get that. Uh-uh. No, sir. Mm-hmm. But you should. Yeah. Call uh, the Leaf. <laughs> long as, and, and let me tell you what, we're drinking <clears throat> Angel's Envy. Yes, sir. And, you know, I'm a fan. I'm a fan. What do you think, Larry? Yeah, it's it's a nice bourbon. It is. And I think it's probably a little bit more on the lighter side for me. Because that's what you're tasting. It, it, it's, not, it's not that hot straight out the bat. It's not hot. Mm-hmm. It's only like 86 and 0.6 proof, which is really low for me. It's flavorful. Though. I mean, we were drinking that still Austin barrel pr- or cast drink <laughs> oh, last gone. night. It's gone. <laughs> and it was 116 pr- or 118. And I'll tell you what. You knew you were drinking it, but it had a lot of flavor. A lot of flavor, and so I think still Austin has impressed me. Yeah, I told you, I you know I well you know that cash streak is different though. Oh, it's night and day. Oh yeah, it's a it's a Tyson punch to that, but it's it's a Tyson punch of love. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It ain't one of them. He mad at you, gonna bite your ear afterwards. He just hitting you like letting right, you know, right, right, right. You know, he, he's punching you in the back. Yeah, letting you know, hey, I'm here, I'm here. Gotcha. <laughs> But it's so, good. Hey, well, let's uh, jump over to. Oh, we got a great interview coming up oh, a little yeah. bit later. I brought one back. I brought lots of interview we back know. from TPE. <laughs> so, you know what? I'm going to let it be a surprise who it is. You're not going to want to miss it. I enjoyed all the interviews. Good. Except one. Which one? I hate to even tell you. Okay. But I'm going to tell you. Okay. <laughs> you know, old Tim from the Burndown? Yes. I had him on. How was it? Oh, you know, that dude, he's so full of himself. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding, Tim. I'm, I'm just kidding. ready to say, that's not the Tim. I know. <laughs> no, 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 not that Tim. I know. I'm talking no, no, about no, no. The, no, from no, what no. I've seen, that's not the Tim. I'm like, I know. I, I'm kidding. Okay. Oh, it, it was good. I gave him a hard time. At the end, I asked him why he didn't like me. Everybody, you give everybody a hard time. Right. Man. But I like, that's, that's like a test. True. If you can stand that test, then we get to hang out. We get to hang out. If you can't pass that test, holla at you. We don't get the pass. <laughs> holla at you. Yeah. Holla so at you. anyway, uh, you're not. What gonna test did you give Larry? He's too big for me to give him a test. <laughs> <laughs> and he's too old. He's say like six nine. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Hands the side of the size of your side of your face. Yeah. You remember you? Now we're not going to go into because this is the regular show. But you uh-huh. remember my uh, midget joke. Yeah. Well, you flip that joke around and you're dating Larry. <laughs> now you know how the midget feels. <laughs> you see him over there just laugh, just grinning and it looks like, yeah. <laughs> nah, bro, I'm good. So, all right, guys. Well, let's jump into our sponsorships right quick. Mm-hmm. We're going to go through them a little bit quickly because the sun is fading fast here. <laughs> and so it's also getting a little cold. Luke! <laughs> hey, bro. <laughs> <laughs> there comes Luke. Luke! <laughs> Your fly's open. He looked down. He looked down. He knew he had sweatpants on. <laughs> yeah, we're recording. How you like our new setup there? You see that? Awesome. Awesome. Because I wanted to. <laughs> you know how that works. Hey, uh, 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 uh. All right. 
Larry's trying to give my peanut brittle to my wife. And, then, and you know what? As soon as it goes in, you don't get none. You don't get none. I was going to give you some. I know. I know. It's all right. Go ahead. All right. So, hey, let's jump into our sponsors right now. Yes, quick. sir. We got, we got four great sponsors. Yes, sir. We got Case Elegance. Uh, honey. If you're looking for a humidor. A travel door. A travel door, cutter, lighter, lighter, whatever you need. Man bag. Boom. They got it. I got, got the it. man bag. I love it. I got, well, you've got the travel, travel humidor. humidor. You've mm. got the military footlock. <gasps> I got the octador. <gasps> and they are quality, quality, mm-hmm. quality, and customer service second 100%, to none. 100%. Second to none. Look down the show notes for shut Case up, Elegance. Up, you can zip up. on over there and check out what they have. And then let's talk about McAuliffe Cigars. Dude, we're going to focus on the ambassadors uh, because those guys are a unique bunch of guys and girls that hang out, talk about cigars, love cigars, and they're a community. I love the word unique you use. Oh, they, I mean, they are. Yeah. I mean, I, I don't know of any other cigar brand that has that type, type of, of a group. group yeah. You know what I mean? And they get their own challenge coin. Mm-hmm. Look down the show notes. Shut click up, on up, the McAuliffe link to go be uh, ambassador, ambassador. And you'll get your own coin with your own number on it. So yep. make sure you check them out. And then we have... Tabanero cigars, mm-hmm. which is what I'm smoking today. And mm-hmm. let me tell you what, Yanko just got back from Nicaragua. Dude, he was live earlier today on Instagram mm-hmm. talking about his whole adventure trip and how much he loves it down there and all that good stuff. Anyway, uh, if you're not smoking Tabanero, I promise you, you're missing out. This was my cigar of the year for last sure year. Sure was. And I can't wait to see what they do next. You know what I mean? <laughs> I and, but what I know that they do every single time mm-hmm. is quality. quality. Mm-hmm. Construction is spot on. Blend. I don't know if perfect. you know this. I've smoked 13 boxes of these. Are you aware that out of 13 boxes. <laughs> wait a minute. How long have they been a sponsor? Not long enough for that's me to smoke saying, 13, 13 boxes. boxes. I, I, that's what, I, I, that's I, the first I, thing came to my mind. Cause I smoked these before they became our sponsor, and that's why they're our sponsors, because after I fell in love with them, I was like, hey, man, I would love to. to talk about yeah, you, you because I am digging what you yeah. do. And so that's how we do it. But, yeah, out of 13 boxes, I've had one cigar that the the, the draw was no bueno. That's That's, that's perfect quality. And you know you what? Have you have one even, you out of 13 you, and, boxes. And, and, you know, they test draw every cigar. Yeah. And I figure that day the test draw dude was hungover. How many come in the box? 20. Dude, you're looking at over 200 sticks. Mm-hmm. And you had one? Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That, and, and dude. Yeah. yeah. Right, that, you good. Boom. That's good. all you need That's to know need right to know. there. That's it. So, anyway, look down the show notes, Shut and you can up. click on the link to go find Tabanero. They have a huge line of different cigars. Try the Mike and Mike if you haven't. Mm. Try the Sun Grown, Robusto, the Toro, and then let's talk about Connecticut's. I mean, I've smoked some really good Connecticut's. I have like a top five to ten Connecticut's that I smoke on a regular basis, but I didn't know what creamy... <laughs> truly was until i smoked that that connecticut you know what i mean Mm -hmm. and i've smoked a lot of connecticut's now and that blew me away i mean and it still has the flavor though oh yes i mean it's like sucking butter through us and i'm not going there with you (laughs) you know (laughs) the big straw i'm still not going all right and then let's let look down the show notes look for tabernacle look at the leaf the leaf so, you in know, Abilene, that's Texas. the home away from home for 1166 us. 1166 North 2nd. Now, 1166 North 2nd, unless uh, yeah. you're John Price. Then you go to. And it, we moved the leaf to Merkel, okay? <laughs> You'll find us there next Saturday <laughs> in Merkel. You, were so you know, wrong, John. You know, John. I know coming. he's coming. He sent me an t- uh, Instagram. He said, "Man, I I can't wait to smoke." Y'all said, "I'll be there." And he's gonna send him to Merkel. <laughs> <laughs> he gonna send him to Merkel. <laughs> Where is he? There's nowhere to smoke in Merkel, man. On the train tracks. We moved the leaf there to the train tracks. <laughs> it's on North Second, eleven sixty six Merkel. <clears throat> anyway, Still uh, in Taylor County, dude. If you're looking for cigars, you're looking for accessories. I mean, you're looking for anything pipe, dealing tobacco. With, with with tobacco. I mean, you're missing Quality out if tobacco, you're not hanging yeah. out at the Leaf. Woo! Get a little windy out here. Yeah. Anyway, uh, 
I, I, I mean, the leaf sets the bar. Mm. You know what I mean? Mm. They really do. And I mean, I know guys might not understand that. However, but and when I, you and, come and, and, and visit, here's the thing. Here's the thing. I, I was in Vegas at a place called the Eight. It's okay. a lounge. Okay. Super, super nice. Okay. I'll tell you a story about that a little later. All right. But it still doesn't compare to the Leaf. Got you. First of all, the humidor doesn't measure up. Okay. And we're talking the humidor there has mm-hmm. lockers on both sides. Mm-hmm. You know who has lockers on this side? Michael Jordan, A-Rod, Luke Bryant. I mean, the people that we all know. So it's 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 high fluting. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. But the selection was not like maybe the selection there was like maybe uh shit a 20th of what we got it, it was tiny yeah compared to and you know but but that's not what their specialty no, sure, yeah. is. their specialty is you go in there and it's a beautiful plush leather environment they got an outdoor patio uh-huh. great lounge it's the it's the environment with them not the sticks but they focus on the lounge experience yeah. okay so the leaf gives you a the lounge, lounge experience, experience. They and the humidor experience and they are all about the experience yes. and so it's like every lounge i go to i like they may do this one thing better than the leaf but however they may do this one thing better but however but nobody does is it doing it all yeah. even close yeah. to as yeah. good as the yeah. leaf yeah. And so hats off to Jay and Most Corey definitely. for Most definitely. I mean, putting us in a place where we just love to be. <laughs> and don't want to miss it. <laughs> so, well, hey, guys, we're going to take a quick little break. We'll come back after the interview. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. Hey, guys, thanks for hanging through the break. We have a up, special guest with us today a dude that i just met last night at the tpe after party gave me one of the best smokes i think i've actually ever had (laughs) thanks bro man i'm serious (laughs) now this is art and Mm -hmm. i'm sorry what did you say your last name is garcia garcia i don't know until last night who you are okay and you give me this cigar that, dude, like, I've been flying around 100 miles an hour in every direction since I've been here. Right. When you gave me that cigar, I was like, you know what? I'm going to plant my ass right here in this chair, <laughs> and I'm actually going to enjoy this cigar. Absolutely. I'm not going to be walking around. Thank you. I appreciate it. Beautiful, beautiful blend, the stick. I mean, and, dude, that is, like... The perfect size cigar, Vitola. You Absolutely. know what I mean? And because I'm not a big ring gauge guy, mm-hmm. and I and I'm not a huge box press guy, but that's not like the real rigid box press. It's not. I call them a semi box press. That's what we call it, semi box press. Okay. Form. I thought I made that up. <laughs> hey, turn my headset up just a little bit, please. Can you hear okay? I just my microphone a little up too. There you go. Hey, make sure that when he's speaking, he's in the green, please. Speak up. Test one, two, test, test. Okay, good. Perfect. Yeah, man. It it was just a pleasure, and it was unexpected. You know what I mean? It was a pleasure meeting you as well, bro. Oh, I had a great time hanging out with you because you were just chilling like me. I was just chilling. I'm not getting excited. You know, there was a few people come by that say hello that you got to jump up and talk to, but for the most part, I sat right there and enjoyed that beautiful stick. Do you have a name for it? Yes. So this is called the Segovias by Segovias Destali for the U.S., which is going to drop in the market uh, the following month, by the end of next month. Okay, cool. Yes. So we're looking at the end of February, early March. It should be out in the market in the U.S. Uh, we're going to distribute all over the U.S. So, so if you have a cigar lounge out there that don't have our cigars, make sure you request it. That's how you get cigars into your shop. Absolutely. Right. Because 90% of the good shops, when you request cigars, they'll bring them in. Mm-hmm. But they don't know what they don't know. Yep. So you know what I mean? You got to get them in there. But anyway, man, uh, how'd you get into the cigar industry? Oh, man, it's a, it's, a, it's a cool thing. It's a crazy story. 
and I'm not going to say the same old thing that everybody says in the industry. You know what I mean? But mine comes from my, my genes, my blood, brother. You know, my great-grandfather, he used to grow tobacco. And, um, and then he moved to a different country. And in that country, he tried raising some tobacco as well. Grandfather was born. Nothing happened. He didn't want to follow great-grandfather's footsteps. All he did was smoke cigars. So he got drafted to the military and, and uh, the U.S. Army to become an American. So uh, he met my grandmother by being stationed in San Diego in Mexico. And then my family was born. My father was born. And that's the story where it begins, right? Um, so my, my, uh, my grandfather's kids, none of them got into the cigar industry uh, or my great-grandfather's kids, right? But when I was 15 years old, my grandfather, he sat me down. It was my birthday. And he says, son, today we're going to make you a man. I said, great. Are you going to buy me a car? He says, I'm going to give you a cigar. And your dad already gave me permission. And so uh, he sent me just like me and you right now. He says, go grab a stick like the ones I smoke out of my humidor and bring it over here. Grab whatever you want. So I remember I grabbed one of the, he kept some of the old Arturo Fuente cigars with Cuban tobacco. Wow. From Tampa. Yeah. So that was my first experience. Really? And so, uh, and he started telling me how a, a cigar makes a man. It helps a man, and everything he knew about tobacco because of my great grandfather. Right, my great grandfather died when he was 101 years old. He actually had me as a baby. There's a picture that I'm still trying to get. He's in his wheelchair, old, maybe 99 years old. Has me here, and a cigar in the other hand. Nice. I'm a baby. Yeah. Right? And so I'm 40 years old now. <laughs> and so, anyways, make the story short. I had the cigar. I choked my ass to dead. I mean, I didn't know what I was doing at that time, 15. And so a few months later, my grandfather passed away. And so he left that big impact in my life. So then I continued taking cigars from his humor right after he died. And, uh, and now I'm a, I'm a big aficionado. I'm nice. A brother of the leaf. You know what I mean? So. Well, you're more than you're more than just that, because <laughs> you you've made a beautiful cigar here, and you know, I can't wait to see these available. Absolutely, brother. So, uh, in 2019, we released that cigar you're smoking uh, here in the U.S. under uh, my other company name, Anti Westley Cigars, and pretty much, you know, we got the best booth of the year. We got uh, we our robusto, the same blend, got the number 12 cigar. The number 12 of the world by Cigar Journal Magazine out of the top 25 for that year. Wow. And so it was a big thing for us. I mean, you know, new in the game and in the retail game. And all of a sudden, boom, we get awarded like that. And after that, I started coming out in magazines. In 2018, I, I have a big article about me with Tobacco Business Magazine uh, when I come on the music studio smoking a cigar. And so, you know, I, I've been at it since 2015, actually. We st- our first show was in New Orleans the last year. Oh, wow. At IPCPR. And so uh, I remember uh, uh, we drove from California all the way to New Orleans because I just bought me a new Tahoe at that time. So I wanted to test test. That's the a drive. That is a beautiful drive, but a long drive. And so um, it's funny because we, we, got, we got to the show, and for some reason, the company that we hired to set up the little boot we had uh, didn't set up the boot. So we get there, there's nothing. And so we call them, hey, what happened? What's going on? Oh, yeah, we apologize. We had a death in the family, and so we didn't fulfill any of them. So I said, well, give me back my $6,000 charge, right? So I didn't make the story short. I had no <coughs> boot. All I had with me was my retractable ba- banners and business cards. And you didn't get $6,000 back. And, well, we got them later. Eventually, all right, right, all right. But um, we, had to, we had to do a Costco run. And we had to buy some furniture at Costco, so it was cool though because at that time we, we they had those those uh those high high chairs those wood high chairs with leather and it came with the little chess table. And that's what you took. And, and that's what we took to the to the show on our booth, and then we bought a coffee machine. So when we got to the hotel, our cigars were supposed to be delivered there from our our importer at that time, and no cigars showed up. The cigars didn't make it to the to, oh. to New Orleans. Till the last day when we checked out, they got there. Wow. So we're at the show. So all we could do is just give business cards and give coffee. 
So uh, I, I how'd mean, that go? I mean, did you get any business from it? No business. Wow. Just an expense. And so, uh, but the best thing about that show was I got to spend time with uh, Orlando Padron Sr. And I got to spend time with Don, Don Carlos Fuente. Wow. And so I remember um, uh, we were right in front of the boot, uh, Padron's boot, right? So their big ass boot was right there. And we're over here and these little, little guys with just coffee and banners, and business cards. And no cigars. And no cigars. So I'm not smoking a cigar. And so Don Orlando Padron was driving his little mo- uh, motorcycle. His little, what do you call those things? Uh, I call them a scooter. A little scooter, right? So he drives from his boot to me. And he says, son, what are you smoking? Can I t- test one of your cigars? I said, I'm so sorry, Don Orlando. You know, I feel ashamed. My cigars never made it. I told him the story. He says, I'll be back. So he went back to his boot, came back with a couple boxes of Padrones. Wow. And he gave me, he gave me uh, one of the boxes was a Damaso. They just came out that year in 2015 you know, with the white label. Mm-hmm. And we got to smoke that with him. So he got to chill with me for a couple hours in my booth. And he was just schooling me about the business, brother. So it, it was it was not a wasted trip. It was not a wasted it, trip. It wasn't what you thought it was going to be, but it turned out to be pretty badass. It, it was pretty badass. I got to spend time with him, and God bless his soul. Uh, and, and, you know, I got to respect him a lot. And, and he told me his story, everything he went through in the business, his struggles, you know, before he is who he was, the company. And so that I'm always going to treasure that. And and I watched a documentary on Patron. His story is amazing. Mm-hmm. And I mean, basically, he went from nothing, and people was like, "You can't do that." And he was like, "I'm going to try." Same, same thing they tell me now. People just keep telling me, "No, you can't do that. You can't do that." I said, "Watch." Hats off to you for doing it. You know what I mean? Because I can promise you, you know how many people think, man, I would love to make my own cigar. Absolutely. It's scary, though. I mean, there's a lot of competition. There's a lot of competition. And cigars, especially if you're the man, there's a lot of variables out there that you're not in control of. That's right. That's the tough part. Yep. I mean, I don't even know. Like, I'm a control freak. Mm-hmm. How do you, like, let people do what they're just saying they're going to do? And I mean, they're, like, hundreds of miles away. Right. Uh-oh. Ran out of fluid. Hey, throw us that lighter. Thank you. Oh, that's, <sighs> a, oh, that's a cool lighter, too. Have you seen it? I got one. Oh. They gave it to me yesterday. Yeah. Yeah, the guy who makes these. I, we met him in the uh, elevator. <laughs> that's cool he's like hey i do lighters and i was like all right cool and i said does it work he also has a, a lighter like a gun lighter oh really yeah pretty cool one i've got a gun lighter in our studio that is a colt 45 oh sh- nice brother. and it's got an eagle on the handle mm-hmm. it's done in nickel and i have the matching gun wow pretty cool i love guns man. i do too that was from my uh father-in-law he passed away God bless you, sir. and he was like the gun collector that everybody thinks they know someone that collects guns right no this guy knows this dude <laughs> he was with me and i mean wow but anyway back to you yeah tell us about before cigars the music business so before we get to the music okay. business, we were talking about the struggles to what i do yes right so in in 2000, and so right after the New Orleans, I say, you know what? I got to connect with the factory that's going to be able to deliver the way I want it to. But I got myself involved about 12, 13 years ago, more in the production side. So I moved to SLE for a few months. I worked for a few factories, uh, undisclosed factories. I learned the process from the tobacco fields to the galerones, to, and then I went to the production side. We call it over there, this palillo. And then I learned all that stuff. And then I learned how to manage production and things like that. So when I did all that, then I was a little bit more experienced of how to make a cigar. And so uh, in 2017, I started blending this blend. 
And I remember I asked I asked Nestor uh, Placentia and Nestor Lee, hey, brother, if I pay you for a couple of cigars, can I go make my blend with all your tobaccos you have? Because they have, like, they have a room with most of the tobaccos in the world so you could make a blend and then know how to even make your cigar. So I'm like, yeah, yeah, go ahead. So I started making blends, brother. One, two, three, four, five days, six days, a week, two weeks in there, and I'm paying for like 20, 30, 40 cigars at a time, right? And so uh, I was just... Uh, I'm glad that I was able to get that privilege to do that. Um, and then when I had the brand, I said, okay, this is it. So a few years later, I hooked up with this other factory. Uh, who It was a brand new in the game. And um, they needed clients. So I said, look, let me come in. I'm going to bring my own production manager, my own boncheros, my own boleras. And uh, I pay you, you pay them. But they're my people. I control them. And... Um, Let's start my cigar. So we did that in 2018, and the cigars came out delicious. And that's how we got started with Antigua Astoria. And, and, and so um, we released it in 2019 here at, at the show at IPCPR, not TPE, but IPCPR. And that's when we kicked off, brother. They, you know, a lot of people loved the cigars. They accepted them. Uh, we started getting reviews from all over the world, not just in the U.S., and so the cigars now, they Antigua, they sell all over Europe. Uh, Germany is my biggest market. Really? Uh, I'm, in, I'm even in Congo, Africa. You I know? don't even know where that is. <laughs> <Me neither. laughs> I'm in Romania and Transylvania. You know, it's a lot of countries. France. I just came out in a magazine called El Immature Cigarre. They did a whole article on me, brother, with pictures, pictures of my family. Uh, because my cigars are selling pretty good in France and Paris. I think we got like about... 50 to 60 stores in Paris and in France. And so uh, now I'm in Thailand, I'm in Dubai, I'm in Saudi Arabia, I'm in uh, Malaysia. How are you doing that? I mean, are you the guy? I mean, are you like, you pick up the phone? Well, you know, for those countries, we got to go to a distributor. Oh, okay. I don't know how it works if you're getting cigars in Dubai. So, so different country goes to a distributor. And so uh, they buy a big portion of boxes. 100, 200, 300 boxes, and then they, they distribute in different stores. We don't do anything. We just send it to them. They pay me. And and, and I, you're good. And, and then after that, I show support. So if they put it at a store, I'll help promote the store with my, my product. Right. And so uh, that's what we were able to grow. But in the U.S., we had a little challenge in 2000, the end of 2019, all the way up to uh, 2021, 2020. And uh, we had to remove the name Antigua out of the U.S. And so what we did is we changed the name. So we changed it to Segovia de Esteli. So we used to be Antigua Esteli. So I still kept the Segovia. So we, we already had the name anyways, right? So we just continue with the flow, man. We continue with it. And people accepted it. They liked the name. And they liked the new company name. So uh, it got to the point where I said, you know what? I got to have control of my cigars. I got to be able to control the tobacco, the way it's pure and fermented. I got to be able to control the way it's cut, the way the way the wrappers look. I said, and by working with another factory, it's not going to do it for me. So then uh, I got together with an investor, friend of mine, and I said, you know what? This is what we need to make this happen. So in 2016, I got the key. In June of 2016, I'm sorry, in June 16 of 2021, I got the keys to our new factory. Oh, wow. And so, so it, you know, it's not a big factory, right? Like AJ or any of those guys. Well, yeah. But it's a factory enough to fit about 50 people. And uh, I could fit easily 25 tables right there. Table meaning a couple. Monchero and Dulea. And so, right, we started with four tables. Then we grew to six. And then all of a sudden we have eight. Then we grew to ten. Wow. And uh, I just order <clears throat> uh, another... Uh, Mm, 15 tables more. So we could have 25 couples. Now, when you have uh, 25 couples, that means we could make up to a million cigars plus. Right? Wow. Are you serious? Yeah. So, you know, it, it's always good to dream big, but we got to be conservative. So uh, this year, it's going to be our first year in the market again because we, we stopped selling cigars in 2020 in the U.S., but um, now, with the blessing of God and, and, and the blessing of the people, when we were going through our challenge, 
with our old brand, uh, a lot of people supported us in the industry, a lot of cigar retailers. So back then, I remember I, I, I was able to grow our sales to about 80 retailers in the U.S., California included. And so now we have over 160, bro. Wow. For people wanting the cigar, the one you smoke. It's, look at that burn. Yeah. Look at that burn. Mm-hmm. And I and I just tapped the ash a little ago. Look, it doesn't want to fall. It's aged. It's not ready. I mean, boom. I got to hit it three, four times just to get it to fall. <laughs> I mean, you know, it's aged. Let me, Let me see if that doesn't show the date. But this cigar is probably from, I want to say November. It was made in November. And so... Um, so we did. We took the risk, brother. We opened the factory, and it was a whole different game change. Whole different game change. I basically live in Esteli now. Wow. You know, I did. a few days ago I got back from Esteli. I was gone for eight months. You like it over there? I love Nicaragua. It's a beautiful country. The beaches, the oceans, right? Uh, Esteli. It's a very conservative town. Uh, you know, there's nothing much to do there. Maybe go to a, one of the restaurants, local restaurants right there. Or How's the food? The food is delicious. Yeah, they have great, great food. Um, you know, I already have a few of my friends own restaurants there, so every day I order in from the, to the factory, you know, so I'm always eating. That's why I'm a little... Hey, hey buddy. Hey, hey, hey buddy. Right? But um, uh, as far as... As far as uh, hanging out in Esteli with COVID right now, we, we haven't done that. Gotcha. Because, uh, uh, you know, we go from the house to the factory, maybe go buy food and come back to the house. Uh, you know, we were there when the Delta hit the wave, the Delta wave. It killed a lot of people. It killed a lot of our friends. Mm, sorry to hear that. One of the gentlemen who, who sold me all the wood inside my factory, because we actually made the first 10 uh, uh, puestos or production tables. We made them inside my factory, brother. We made them inside. And so all the wood for all the tables, all the chairs, that we, and even our humidor for aging room, we bought it from this gentleman who passed away from Delta, a young guy. Left the wife, two kids, a week after his mom died, and I heard his sister died too. Oh. So it was a big tragedy when the Delta wave hit. So because of that, we, we were just at home, not going out, you know, uh, finally, now my wife and I, we were kind of like going to the beach, but staying away from people. And, and uh, we were fortunate enough that I have my shots, and then uh, my wife has hers too. So, uh, we, you know. But as far as hanging out, it's a little boring. Over here. So, you'd rather be in the States hanging I'd, out? I'd rather be eating In N Out burgers in California and eating some good pizza. Dude, we had the best pizza in the world last night. Oh, man, where's that at? I got to go eat there. I don't even know. <laughs> we were going to In-N-Out Burger, mm-hmm. and there's a dude sitting on a bench eating some pizza, and I was like, man, that looks good. And he yeah. was like, yeah, it's right there. We walked over there. Dude was closing up, and he's like, two for one. Oh, man. <laughs> and I ate that pizza and was like, it was the perfect crispy, the perfect melted cheese, yeah. just the right amount of... What do you call it? Yeah, sauce. Sauce. Right. And the crust was just enough crunchy. You was know that, what I mean? Was that that, little, that spot which is uh, like right next to a uh, like a Mexican restaurant? We didn't see that, but like In-N-Out Burgers right here. Oh, you mean over there? Yeah. Oh. We actually walked to the In-N-Out Burger and then, bam, got pizza instead. Oh, okay. Well, I'm about to go eat there, bro, because I've been feeding some pizza for a bit. Dude, it was delicious. <laughs> And, hey, two for one in yeah. Vegas? But, you know, the life in Esteli is different. Uh, you know, most of my friends, Skip Martin is one of them. Oh, no way. You know Skip Martin? Uh, You're yeah, good friends yeah, with Skip? Yeah. We're good friends. We're good friends for a bit. Now, I'm sure you know uh, Mike Rosales. Mike, Mikey, yeah. We were hanging out the other night. So, we did a show with Mike Rosales down in Austin. Nice. We went to his headquarters. Yep. It was a four-hour freaking show. Nice. When Mike starts talking, <laughs> you start listening. You know that, what I mean? That, that's what I do with Mike. I start listening. 
I've never met Skip though. He's mm-hmm. always somewhere else. Whenever so I, Skip. So you know, he 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 also lived for a few years in Esteli, right? But him and Mike just recently bought a beautiful beach house in San Juan del Sur, top of the hill, next to the a big Jesus Christ there, uh, overseeing the whole Pacific Ocean. Wow! On the other side, the north side and the south side of the ocean. And uh, he invited me to his house not long ago. I was in that side of town, so it's about. At seven to an eight hour drive from Esteli. So a lot of the American cigar makers, they all moved to San Juan del Sur. They don't they don't live in Esteli anymore. And because you know they have the factories running and, and they have the right people working for them. Uh, one of the problems that we have in Esteli is finding good loyal workers. Really? People you can trust. And so you know, they already his brother in law, it's uh I think his brother in law is the, the, the factory manager and his partner, I think. I'm not sure. So he has it going on. So so a lot of my friends who used to live in Esteli, now they moved out of Esteli to San Juan. So I was telling my wife, listen, once we get this going, the factory running by itself, uh, we definitely got to, we're going to buy a house at the beach. We, you know what I mean? It's more fun. Sure. Yeah. It gives you something to do when you're not working, you're which relaxed, is most of the time. Right. So so now I feel like lonely. You know, I'm like, oh. Sh- Everybody left friends. you. Everybody left, you know. The guys who own, uh, uh, the couple who own the, uh, uh, the it's called the. Uh, um, Are you talking about the couple that does the black label? Yeah, yeah, company? yeah, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. They also moved to Esteli. Yeah, I had him on the show. Uh, the other gentleman uh, who, he, he's part of the Pichardo those cigars and they, um, uh, Lucio, Lucio. I don't know. Lu- him. Luciano, Luciano. Uh, his cigar just got rated the aficionado, cigar aficionado. No, good job to him. Um, anyways, he also just has the house in, in, in San Juan del Sur. So all the people that I know who also live in the United States, they all moved out. Wow. <laughs> so it's time for me to move out of Stelly, right? I just got there. You got you to be where your friends are. Right. But I love I love just the whole Nicaraguan culture. It's beautiful. My wife's full-blooded Nicaraguan. Now, is it a much slower pace? Much lower pay. So when somebody in Nicaragua tells you, I'll take care of it, that means I'll see you in a week. Right? <laughs> <laughs> so I have a philosophy in the factory with my employees. So I got tired of my employees telling me, no, no, we'll take care of it tomorrow. We'll take care of it. Let's just say it's like 9, 10 in the morning. And I ask them to do something. And when they, and they tell me, I'll do it. I'll take care of it tomorrow. I said, bro, why tomorrow when it's just 9, 10 o'clock in the morning? I said, do it now. That's why I pay you. So I put a big sign in the factory and it says, never leave what you could do today or tomorrow in Spanish. And so that's her philosophy. And not everybody does that, brother. And even my wife sometimes, she, she'll forget about that. I said, sweetie, just make it happen right now. Don't do it tomorrow. Nice. And so that's the culture over there. But it's very slow paced. Now, where did you grow up? In California. Where at in California? I grew up in, uh, I'm originally from San Diego, born in, born, and I was raised there until I was 13. Then we moved to L.A. County. And then I, I grew up in La, Mor- La Morada area, Orange County. Right? Now I live in Orange County. I've been there for 14, 15 years now. And so that's where I come from. Though. Okay. Yeah. And so I haven't been to California much, mm-hmm. but how's the cigar culture like over there in California? It's pretty big. Actually, California is one of the biggest markets for cigars. And I and I kind of know that just because I get statistics on our demographics. Right. New York, Florida, Atlanta, Texas, California. Arizona. Arizona has a great, but they don't have the population. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. For me, I when mm-hmm. I see the stats, right. I can see which states I get the most listeners to. Right. And those... Five places are where everybody is. Yeah, yeah. And I was shocked that California is constantly in my top two or three spots. We love cigars. What can I say? Hey. <laughs> well, and you know what's funny is number one is New York. Mm-hmm. I was like, I, I didn't even know those dudes were big. Now, after years of doing this, right. I'm like, oh, cigars, New York. Wow. Very cool. Have you been in New York? Many times. Have you visited some of the badass cigar shops from, you know? No, I haven't visited any of the cigar lounges in New York. When I travel a lot to New York, I was in the music business. Oh, okay. With the artists and stuff like that. 
But uh, in, in regards to cigars, I haven't gone for cigars. I always wanted to go, to, you know, some of the old classics. Well, the store that I wanted to visit was in that Sherman store. Oh, me Manhattan, too, dude. And I didn't have a chance. They closed down. Right. So then when I called them to find out how much was the... Uh, Rent. How much was the the location? They were selling it, right? I said, see you later. Never mind. Yeah, on Times Square, whatever it's called. Yeah, I think they wanted $14, 15000000 million for the building. <sighs> and you know, it's really not that big. No. It's very narrow. Mm-hmm. But I always wanted to go there. In fact, in our studio, I have... Nat Sherman would do a special run every so often and put out their clocks. Oh, yeah. It's beautiful. And I was like, I got to get one of those. No, those are, I love clocks. I'm, I'm just a big clock guy anyways. I have clocks in my house, in my office. I took one to Esteli. It, it reminds me of our history. Yeah. yeah so. Because you know what? Cool. There's not as many clocks as there used to be because everybody has time on their phone. It's a whole different but game change. Oh, yeah. And, it's, it, and there's. I mean, it just takes away the feeling of time. Absolutely, brother. How's your cigar now, by the way? Dude, it's phenomenal. <laughs> I'm, I'm telling you, I'm digging it. And, hey, my guys that watch the show, they know I don't bullshit. Mm-hmm. If it's not good, I'm not going to say it's good. Right. And if it's phenomenal, I'm going to let you know it's phenomenal. I appreciate Thank that, you. Man. Hey, best cigar I've had while I've been here. Really? Oh, yeah. Not even close. Oh, man. Seriously. I don't know what to say. Thank you. <laughs> mm, thank you. But you know what it is? It's hard work and dedication. Not just by me, but by all my people in Nicaragua and Esteli in our factory. Tabacalera, Segovia, Esteli, S.A. You know, they work hard, bro. It's well money earned. That's why I take care of my poncheros and my roleras. I make sure that they're, they're paid the proper way, you know. I pay my people extra of what they make so I could keep them. And that builds loyalty. Absolutely. I mean, but when you, because you're treating people the way they should be treated. How many people want to open up a factory and they got people that have no jobs and they don't want to pay them anything? Can you imagine? They're making about 10 to 12 bucks a day. From 7 a.m. to 5 p.m. Every day. That's how much they make. Wow. So I said, okay, I pay him 20. Created loads. That's the kind of workers we have in our factory. And you gave them, I mean, that's actually quite a bit more money Mm -hmm. when you think about every day. You Mm -hmm. know what I mean? I mean, how much, how much is a worker in McDonald's makes a day? Right. In and out, you know, in and out pays the most. I know I didn't know I think that. They're being, I think they're getting paid twenty bucks an hour right now. Wow. You know what I mean? You know how much a, ma- a, a, a restaurant manager makes in and out? One hundred and fifty grand, bro. Are you serious? I'm dead serious. Wow. Now you're from California. Yeah. You love in and out. I. You I, can tell, I, right? I, yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, I'm being a Texas guy. I'm a Waterburger guy. Mm-hmm. You ever been to Waterburger? I like Waterburger. It's not. It's totally night and day. You know right, what I mean? Right. Totally different. I like them both, but being in Texas all my life, it was. I like that burger that has mushrooms and all that stuff. Oh One yeah, with and, and it's not just mushrooms. It's the uh, what do you call it when they sauté them? So let me tell you a quick story about Texas and Waterburger. I'm over there. I went to go see my. Uh, I used to work with the guy who used to import my cigars. He's from Texas, but I'm in. Uh, I think. Dallas, Texas, right? I, I remember I went from Fort Dale, Texas to I drove to Dallas because I went to Victoria. I had some big fans and friends of mine in Victoria. So they did a cigar event for me. I went to go see them, stuff like that. Then I drove back to uh, Dallas. Is it that? No, it's not. No, it's uh, what city? You're, you're in, I'm in Abilene. Abilene. What's the, two of the main cities in Texas? You got Houston, Austin, San Antonio, Dallas, Fort Worth. Okay, that's where I was at, Houston. Okay. So I'm there, and I said, I'm hungry. Before I go to the other lounge and smoke more cigars, I said, I got to eat. So I get dizzy, too, <laughs> sometimes, right? So I go to Whataburger, and, and I'm in the drive through And then I order my food. I order extra this, extra that, boom, boom, boom. So I'm about to go pay at the window. And I'm driving a rental car. 
And then I give. I, I remember I took my credit card out. I put it out, and the girls were like, "No, no, no, you're okay." I said, "What do you mean I'm okay?" I said, "Yeah, the car in front of you paid for your meal." Boom. And I said, "Really? Oh shit! Well, thank you. Well, tell them I said well, they took out." Right. They didn't say nothing. They paid for my meal. She said they they wanted to make a gesture. We do that. You know, I'm like, wow, that's a lot of love. Thank you, man. I, I've, you know, I've done that a lot of times. So, I seen that, that car that paid for me took off and then went to like another business somewhere around the parking lot where I was at. So, as I sneak, <laughs> I drove behind. And I said, brother, you didn't have to do that. Thank you very much. Turns out to be it was a wealthy man, right? And he does he does gestures like that all the time. So I give him five cigars. And he says, you know, I'm a big cigar smoker. I said, you know, you just paid the mail for a cigar guy. Here you go, man. It's my treat, brother. Thank you very much. So we exchange information. And ever since then, we've been friends. Wow. But but that's the kind of love Texas gave me, and I love it. I love it so much, and now I have a corporation over there in Texas. Really? Yes. So, um, so man, yeah. So I'm in California now, right? But everything's very expensive in California. Come on down yeah, to Texas, so, bro. Uh, one of my best friends moved to Texas not long ago. And I'm like, I got to make a decision this year. When my wife comes from Nicaragua, uh, we got to make a decision. Either we're going to move to Texas or we're going to move to Florida. That's the two choices. Yeah. One of the choices is because it, her mom lives in Florida, Miami. And she's like, oh, baby, why don't you go to Miami? I said, I like Miami, but I like Tampa better. And I don't like hurricanes, so Tampa's better. Exactly, right? And so, um, or Texas. I want to be closer to California. <laughs> and, so, and you're in the middle. I'm in the middle. I mean, you can go to Florida when you need to. Mm-hmm. You can go to California when you need to. Mm-hmm. So so I love the people in Texas. Uh, uh, a lot of the cigar owner source are good friends of mine over there as well. And so um, I'm excited, bro. I'll let you know when I make the decision. Oh, I would, uh, you know, <laughs> yeah, you let me know because I would love to get together when you were in Texas. Absolutely, brother. Appreciate and I'm you. far from Houston, so if you're in Houston, that's not going to happen. Oh, okay. <laughs> the, the whole thing about Texas is it's big. Absolutely. So. But we'll have to make a, we'll have to do something special in your town and, and go hit up some of the lounges over there as well. Well, we only have one lounge. Okay. And it's probably the best lounge you've ever been to. Really? I'm very blessed to oh, be man. that way, and I don't say that just because it's my home shop. Right. The guy that runs the shop, the owner, he's actually partner, but his partner lives somewhere far. Mm-hmm. And Jay treats people like one day his I was in there in his office, and I he says, why are we in business? And one of his employees says, to make money. And he was like, no, 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 no. We are here to provide an experience. Absolutely. And like everybody says that, Mm -hmm. he means it. You know what I mean? You know, it's funny, bro. Everybody keeps telling me, are you making money? Are you making money? I'm not making money right now. You know how much money we spent in Nicaragua in the last eight months? A lot. Over a quarter of a million dollars. Oof. We haven't had a return. So uh, somebody very important who has a lot of money asked me, Art, it's all about making money. And I said, yeah. Yeah, but we can make money other businesses. I'm in this because I have passion for it. I do this because that's what I love doing. When you smoke my cigar, you'll see why I do it. I'm going to make money, yes, eventually. You know, I'm going to be, hopefully, I could become successful. Right. I, I think with this, you will be, bro. Thank you, brother. But I'm doing this because this is what I love the most. It's my passion. Music and cigars is my passion. I love helping the artists develop. And, I, and then when they, some of the artists I helped, they got automated to the Grammys, the Latin Grammys. And to me, that was an accomplishment, bro. Oh, yeah. I was like, uh, even though I didn't make any money, or maybe they didn't win. But it was a big thing for us. It was a return on your investment. Right. You put in the time. You helped. Absolutely. And it was done with integrity. It was done with passion and with hard work. And that's how I see this here. Bro. 
You know, I do this because that's what I love doing. And I planted my flag a long time ago to make cigars. And we're going to continue making cigars. And I'm going to be looking to smoke them. Thank you, brother. I'm oh, serious, dude. Oh. Best cigar someone's given me at the show. Oh, man. I'm flattered, bro. Thank I, you. <laughs> and I've had a lot of people give me cigars. So every time I go walking around, they're like, oh, smoke this. I'll make sure you get a box. Hey, <laughs> hey. You heard it right here, guys. You heard that. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> and you know you know what's funny is I, I do have people that send me boxes like that. Mm-hmm. And you know what I do with them? I share them. Absolutely. You know what I mean? It's like. When we are at our studio, we kind of have a similar setup, but it's, you know, a different vibe. Yeah. And we, when you get to our studio, mm-hmm. it's a blast. Nice. Can't it's wait to be fun. There. You know what I mean? Right. We have people that are sitting and watching. They're smoking cigar. When I right. tell everybody, don't bring cigars. Don't worry about bourbon. When right. you get here, I'll have it all. Right. And we just have a great time. That's what it's all about, brother. Right. So when you come to Abilene, we're going to have you over to the studio okay. for a whole evening. Nice. Let's have, uh, introduce me to your guy in, in Abilene in the lounge. That way we can have my cigars there. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Oh, dude. When you get me some cigars, he's going to smoke them. Nice. I, everything I get that I love, I take to him and go, you need to check this out. <laughs> Hopefully, he'll like this one. <laughs> hey, I, I tell you what, the last, well, I, I don't know how many, but he's brought in cigars that I was really a big fan of. Nice. Uh, I don't know how much time you spent in Tampa. Mm-hmm. There's a cigar shop there called uh, Tabanero Cigars. I think I heard of them. Yonko Macedo. Anyway, I fell in love with his cigars. Nice. And now they're at the Leaf. And I like the name too, the Leaf, huh? Right. That's beautiful. And so we we are just blessed to be where we are and Absolutely. who we are with. And I can't wait to see what happens. I know you're going to be successful because you can't not be successful if you're producing these. I got about a hundred thousand of those. Well, aging right now. Mm. I got, so with that one, we have the Box Press Maduro. We also have the Robusto, which is the one that got the award in 2019. Obviously, with Segovia, it doesn't have an award. But you know what? Hopefully, we can make any of these two number one. And so I can't wait to do that. And then we have also a, a beautiful Alvano blend, bro. Oh, dude. With an Ecuadorian wrapper that I picked myself in Ecuador. This cigar, brother, let me tell you, this is going to be a combination of different flows of natural tobacco. I mean, this cigar is so, I mean, you just want to eat it like a cake, bro. Like, oh, bring me some. Give me that. It's so tasty, bro, that you have a coffee, you have bourbon, you have whatever you want, even a beer, bro. What I call it a michelada mix, right? You'll smoke that cigar. It's going to be amazing. I didn't bring any, unfortunately, I don't, because they were not aged properly. And you said that's the Havano? Havano Torpedo and also a Robusto 5.5 by 52. Dude, I love Habano. So this year, this year we're releasing, that's my core brand, right? We have Maduro Box Press, Robusto, Havano Torpedo, Robusto. But I'm going to release a Toro, size 54. And I'm also going to release an exclusive limited edition, uh, 52 by seven and a half, which is going to be my 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 big cigar. It's a beautiful cigar. 52, though, that's good for that. It's, length. it's like a Churchill, but a little bigger. And then, that, or people say, oh, it looks like a Lancero, but a bigger. So I, whatever, dude. I tell them that, whatever. It's, I, it's not a Lancero. It's right. like my blend. But we're going to make a blend of that. So that those are going to be part of the family of the Segovias for this brand. Then I'm also releasing another cigar, which is going to be a we're going to start with a Toro and a Torpedo Salomon, uh, and it's going, to, it's going to be dedicated to the Air Force. Oh, wow. One of my mentors uh, in business and also a great friend of mine is an older man. His name is David Rolander. He goes by DGR. Very successful entrepreneur. He wrote a book called uh, CEO Code, and it sells all over the world. One of the best authors out there. But this gentleman, he did it. 208 missions in Vietnam. No way. Flying. Uh, he, he's a fighter pilot or a fighter pilot. And um, his last mission, 
This is when John McCain dropped his bird, and he, he, he was part of the POW. Wow. So this gentleman was so smart, he get, never got taken down. His job was to go to any enemy compound, fly low, and take pictures of the compound. So what he did different was, they're stationed in the ocean. So let's say this is the compound right there. Mm -hmm. We're here. This is where they're stationed at. Instead of flying straight, trying to take pictures, he was smart enough to go all the way around the mountains, even if there's fog and a bunch of stuff right there, right? And come from behind. And, and you see, cause all the weapons were shooting this way, trying to take the birds down, but they were not shooting that way. And he was very successful, 208 missions. Wow. Uh, he, he's, a, he's an older man now. He's in his 87, something like that. But him and I smoke cigars every other day when I'm in California. Wow. And he's been my mentor for the last seven years. Don't you love those guys? I love those guys. Man. Dude, one of the guys that I hang out with on a regular basis, I think he's 73. He never tells me how old he is, but I can do math. He was in Vietnam, and just the stories he tells me, and he's not one of those guys that would ever brag about anything. Right. You know what I mean? Right. This is just what happened. And just when you hang out with guys at that age, right. dude, they just give you gold. They, they give me, he inspires me. He has mentored me through my tough times. When I was going through my challenge with my other brand, you know, I, I probably should have quit because pretty much they took me out of business, brother. I was out. I stopped selling cigars. Oh. I stopped selling cigars. And my, you know, I was lucky enough that all my retailers supported me. And to this day, they're still waiting for their cigars to come back. Wow. <laughs> and I ran into a bunch of them in the la yesterday, and they all pre-order cigars you know and uh i'm i'm very grateful that they're supporting me. and so the so we're doing a cigar just for him right because he likes smoking the, the salomon torpedoes torpedo salomons so i created a beautiful cigar the cigar rings are amazing uh I, i'll show you in a minute i have the already the cigar ring and the cigar ring is designed by one of the top guys in the industry the same guy who designed my other rings Wow. Yeah. And, uh, and then this guy, you know, he designed stuff for Fuente, the Hooklet Watch. He had, Now he has his own brand now doing big things. And so he, my rings, I always want to make sure that they're beautiful. Not because I want to compete. It's just how I like it. Well, we were, I was talking to uh, Mrs. Ramirez earlier. And her 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 band is very traditional, but adds a new twist to it. But I like the traditional. Let me show you. I actually posted on Facebook today our cigar ring coming out. Look at this, bro. Oh, that's nice, man. Mm-hmm. But see, that's that's like I like tradition. You know what I mean? So a little different because I actually draw it myself before I give it to the designer. Really? Yes. And so on the ring, we put the Church of Esteli. That's the Esteli Church, the cathedral from Esteli. Here is one of the volcanoes that I love the most. It's called the Ometepe Volcano. Because I love Ometepe Viso tobacco in my cigars. Mm -hmm. That's when you get the spice, when you do the retro smoke. We have the galeras right here with the people working on the fields. Tobacco leaves right there. We have the American flag on the left. Nicaraguan flag on the right. We have the coins. And every coin symbolizes my life, my family's history. On top, you got Nicaragua. Then you have the, the you, you have to have the Indian, the, the chief. American chief right here, the tobacco. Then you have my my family's history. We go from France to Spain. Right? My my heritage on my mother's side. So we have we have the coin, the gold for Spain, for France, the Mexican coin. And then we have also the Cuban tradition for my great grandfather. Very nice. 
So this whole ring, you know, is not. Then we have the diamond. See that beautiful diamond? Yes. Nothing to do with uh, Diamond Crown. I love those guys, right? But in Nicaragua, we have a slogan, especially Esteli. And, and the slogan in Esteli is called the Diamond of the Segovias. And there it is. Wow, very nice. I love that. It all ties together. It, ties it together. all has meaning. It all has Everything specializes because that's how we, how we picked it. And the name, Segovia is Esteli. And I love that you have your great-grandfather yeah. remembered in there. Absolutely. But I'm actually going to do a cigar for him with his picture on it. And so uh, that should be coming out pretty soon. So there's a lot of exciting things to do this year. Um, now we have, now that we have the factory, we have options. Uh, some, some private brands asked me if I could make them cigars. We're not just going to pick anybody, right? If I'm going to make a, a private blend, it's going to have to be with a company that is serious. And that is going to move up the ladder. Right. And not just stay somewhere. Oh, you make cigar, blah, blah, blah. Why? Because I want to put my name out there. Because this is my legacy, brother. Absolutely. And whatever cigar we put out of the factory, it's going to make sure that, that it stays forever. And whether it has your name specifically on it or you're making it for someone else, mm-hmm. when someone smokes it, they're smoking your stuff. Exactly. And that's, I mean, that's what it is. Right. And then it has to be, I had a meeting a few uh, a couple hours ago with, with with two gentlemen who want to do a private blend and they asked me they, they follow me on social media and all that stuff and I told them I said look I'm not going to be the typical factory that makes the cigars for you blends it for you and then I will ship it to you and for you to, to see what you think I'm not about that bro. I said if you want to make cigars you got to fly your ass to us well but what about the Corona bar- I said, bro, you have a booster on, right? The last, the, your third shot, then don't worry about it. If you want me to make your cigars, you got to fly to Esteli. You got to sit with me in my in my blending table, and we got to blend together. I got to show you the process. So that way, when you talk about your cigar, you know exactly what you have in your cigar. And that's the only condition I ask. If you want to, great. If not, you go look for somewhere else. Hey, and you know what? That makes or breaks. You know what I mean? Exactly. You want to be part? Come on. I'm good. I'm looking for serious people. Right. And so um, I love what I do. So that's why, you know, I'm excited. I'm excited. This year is going to bring a lot of new things. Now, let me tell you, it's a, it's, a, it's very struggling, bro, to have a factory. You know, running a factory is not what you think it is. Oh, I can't even imagine how much work that it's is. It's really hard um, from dealing with the government. You know, like workers come in Nicaragua, uh, paying all the fees they charge every month. If the workers work or not, we still have to pay that, right? And so it, it's 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 very struggling uh, to run the factory, brother. And you know, my wife and I were having a conversation about this. She's like, "Well, honey, uh, how are we gonna make money right now?" I said, well, "We're not." But in my humor, I got close to $600,000 worth of business. You know? So I said, we just got to... Someone once told me, and this is from the Puente family, and it says, all right, let me go back. When, when before I released the cigars, I sent some to Carlito Puente. And he said, Papo, what are you waiting for? Releasing him? There's actually a video of him saying that to me. And I have it on my profile. But he says, hey, something you got to learn is you never rest your hands at times. And that stuck to me. This came from Carlos Fuente back in 2015. Ooh. Never rush your hands at times. Just like their ashtrays, right? Back then, I didn't understand. Now I do. Because a cigar talks to you every day. And it tells you where it's going. Making a blend is not... It's not just putting tobacco leaves together and we'll see what happens. I'm a smoker, whatever. From picking the tobacco, not not just not just learn what you have, but you got to know the var, 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 in Spanish is called variedad. The var, how do you say variety? 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 My what? mouth. Var, variety. From knowing what seed you have in the tobacco, what finca or what tobacco farm it came from, it's very important, brother. 
you can't just be buying tobacco from Joe. Joe Blow in the corner. You got to know where it's come from. You got to know the history of, or the pedigree, I call it the pedigree of your leaf. So you could be able to determine how good your tobacco is going to be, your cigar. And so all these details, brother, that I'm giving you guys, insights, these are things that took me years to learn. And look how nice and slow this cigar is burned. Mm-hmm. I mean, you knocked it out. Thank you, brother. You really did. I appreciate that. <laughs> well, hey, man, how can people find you? Tell everybody before we go yes. how they can get a hold of you. I mean, there might be somebody at a shop be like, all right, I'm, I'm in. How, how do they find you? Well, thank you for your support. If you're going to support us, we appreciate all business, right? We need all the help we can because, you know, we did a big investment. We haven't made any money. So help me just make a little bit by smoking our cigars, right? Anyhow, you can find us at uh, segoviasdestily.com, which is our website. It's still kind of under construction, but the best way to get a hold of us is through social media. On Instagram, we're Tabacalera Segovias. Or, I'll, I'll have a link in the show notes oh, cool. so that they can just click on it. Right. So it's Tabacalera Segovias and also our second brand, Segovias Destili on Instagram. If you want to find me personally, you can find me at Mr. Underscore Art Underscore Garcia. And Instagram. if you run by the Sahara, mm-hmm. I wrote your name and phone number on the bathroom wall. <laughs> Thank you, man. I appreciate it. Thank you, brother. brother. Thank, Thank you so you. much. It's Thank a pleasure. You, I'm honored. It's a pleasure. Likewise, brother. Hey, guys, don't go anywhere. We'll be right back with uh, some information from Bryant. Hey, guys, hope you enjoyed the interview from TPE. It was a blast. It was exhausting, and it was an experience. <laughs> I mean, it was cool, man. Yeah. You know, I a wish lot I of people, been there. A lot of people are telling me they're going to go to TPE in July. I'm uh-huh. not. It's hot, and <laughs> you know what I am thinking about doing? What's that? Is I'm really thinking about going to the Rocky Mountain Cigar Fest. Okay. That's August 27th. And you know what I think would be cool about it is to set up there and just do the show. Because the thing about it is when you go to an event like that, mm-hmm. it's not shop owners and cigar owners mm-hmm. It's people yeah. like us. Uh-huh. And, you know, I love hanging out with people like us. That's when you had the, be- the best experience. Yeah. So I was thinking instead of going to another trade show, the next thing would be to go to one of those. It's like, kind of like what we did at yeah. and, uh, uh, Fort Worth. Spirits. Yeah. Uh, Cigars Cigar and Spirits. Spirits. And, you know, it just depends. I want to kind of see what it looks like because I really want to have the experience of, like, Hanging out and smoking. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Because that's what I really like to yeah. do. I didn't get to do that at TPE. <laughs> so you was working. Dude. <laughs> he was humping. <laughs> While we were doing interviews, there were people waiting to be interviewed. <laughs> you had a line? <laughs> yes. <laughs> wow. And you know me. I can't rush an interview. No, you take forever. I, I, it is what it is. You let them go. And I mean, I had yeah. at one time I had three people waiting. And I was just like, <laughs> and I was like, I think most people might have been like, "Hey, I appreciate you stopping by. We yeah. got to wrap it up." And I was just like, "Can't do that. Can't this keep person, it going. this yeah. person, to for me right now is the most important person. person on the planet. Mm-hmm. And when you're in that chair." That you'll be the most important 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 person. So you can't rush an interview. I got you. And so, but it was a lot of fun. But I mean, that that's like no breaks. Yeah. When you got people waiting, (laughs) you just keep going. I I mean, I didn't even have time to go to the bathroom. (laughs) And I'd look up and I'd be like, "Where'd Tim go?" (laughs) To the bathroom. (laughs) So he's like, "I'm not on camera." (laughs) Right. Well, hey man, we have a huge announcement. Okay. You don't even know. I don't. You don't even know. We we I haven't hung out with you this week because of the snow. Mm-hmm. But April eighth. I'm sorry, but scratched. April tenth. Day after my birthday. April tenth. Yeah. Are you gonna be in town? Nope. Where are you gonna be? My kids want me, man. 
my kids. Want you know what? Her. It's your birthday. They come here. <laughs> no. That's how that works. They're doing things for me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They could get their ass down here. <laughs> no. <laughs> See, when it comes to my oldest daughter and she playing stuff, like the last time she did something for my birthday, I had to go to St. Louis because we went to a Cardinals game. And it was a big thing. Yeah, well, you know what? Y'all could just park on South First and watch the trains go by. <laughs> Happy birthday to you, Dad. I haven't seen enough trains in my life, bro. <laughs> hey, so I said that because the train pulled yeah, by. Yeah, I know. But you know, anyway, <laughs> um, <laughs> April the 10th on a Sunday, mm-hmm. starting at noon, okay. going until 8.30 p.m., Cigar Talk is doing a telethon. To raise money for Cigars for Warriors, just like the old Jerry Lewis telethon. So it, at, you've talked to me about this, but yep. it wasn't in stone. It's in stone. Now. It's in stone. Gotcha. We're going to have a lot of special guests. Gotcha. We're going to have Al McAuliffe. Gotcha. We're going to have Robert Caldwell. I'll be back, though. Okay. Yeah, I'll be back. I'm, I'm telling who's going to be here. Uh-huh. We I was get thinking. We, you're going to be back. Awesome. Anyway, no, I'm just kidding. You guys. <laughs> Shut up, man. I'm talking. No, so <laughs> we're going to have uh, Cigar Madam, you know, Coco. Yes. We're going to have Stogie Chick. Oh. Uh, we're going to have uh, JP. Mm. We're going to have Robert, uh, one of the uh, Cigar Adventure guy. Uh, we're going to have uh, uh, Terrence Riley from Aganorsa yeah. Leaf. Dude. We got the who's who that's going to come by and help us raise money for Put Cigars for Warriors. Warriors. And I'm excited perfect, about it, dude. Check this out. So already I've got a lot of cigar manufacturers and people that are wanting to get involved. They're giving us donations. We're going to have a two-week two. online auction. For and we're going to auction those things off, and you'll it'll be over the day of the telethon. And there will also be raffle tickets because we're going to raffle some of the stuff away. Uh. And we're going to have the... Uh, 2022 Cigar Talk Telethon for Cigar for Warrior t-shirts. You can buy those. We're going to raise money for Cigars Cigar for, for Warriors. Warriors. The troops overseas gotcha. that, you know what, how how can you not support those gotcha. who take care of us? Gotcha. Uh, April the 10th, noon Central eight. Time. To Central eight. Time. Put it on your calendar. It's going to be eight hours of live stream. That is Oh. It's going to be on YouTube. It's going to be on Facebook. It's going to be on Twitch. We're pulling out all the, all stops. the stops. We are going to ra- and Storm. You know Storm. Yes. He's going to be here live with us. And you know, uh, you know, Lauren, uh, the uh, triple Maduro from McAuliffe. Yes, she's going to come down. This is going to be a big Dude, thing. Well, you know what we're doing? It. Back in the room at the uh, Leaf, we're getting like velvet curtains. We're, we're, dude, I'm gonna wear a tuxedo. Oh, gee. it's I'm not gonna, gonna, gonna be, be Jerry Lewis. It's not gonna be a t-shirt, is it? <laughs> no, it's okay. A real, oh, man, <laughs> he gonna come in with a tuxedo no, t-shirt. No, 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 no. <laughs> That's my underwear. <laughs> a little bow tie. <laughs> You won't have no, to No, I'm, I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. <laughs> All right, man. So, hey, we're, we're going to be talking a lot about that. I'll give more details next week. Uh, we're going to start setting up. the. You can actually download an app for the silent auction thing for uh-huh. what we're going to have up. We're going to have cigars. We're going to have accessories. Wow, we're going to have uh, all kinds of cool stuff. I've, I've, everyone I've talked to is like, yeah, I want in on that. That's a blessing, man. That's a blessing. And coming from a vet because I'm a vet. Thank you, man. And you know, hey, we have a local military guy who receives stuff overseas. He's going to come down that's and be on the better. show and say how so much he can it talk meant about to him. It. Yeah, so he yeah. can talk about it. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about, bro. So if any of you guys watching have connections with anybody in the cigar industry and you would like to donate so that we can help raise money, just send me an email, shoot me a text, send a smoke signal. Get you got you gonna market any? You gonna market it? <laughs> Because whatever you get, send it to me so I can send it out to my people that are in the military. Absolutely. That's what, that's what I want to do. We're going to do. We're in, Everybody's included because yeah. we want to support the troops. Yeah, yeah. All right. So let's jaw. Oh. What's, What's that there? That looks like <laughs> one of your pop, top three. Yes, yeah, sir. All right. Well, we're going to jump into this week's pick six. I'm going to let Brian go first because he's already chomping at the bit. So what do you got this week, bro? First one up is going to be the Aladino, Connecticut. Mmm. Which I know you got at the Leaf. Yes. So that's a big announcement. The Leaf now carries Aladino. Aladino. I knew they were going to, but I didn't know we already had them until yesterday. Yes, yes. 
Yes, so and that's that's a perfect example of perfect. Jay bringing in great cigars for us. For us, man. Oh, Aladino's going to be involved. See, 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 see. Sorry, go ahead. See, that's the blessing of it. Number two is going to be my new release of the CAO Amazon Basin. Okay, like cool. I said, it was. It I'm was smoke that tonight while I edit gotcha. the show. It was. It wasn't the. You know the the first time, but it was there. It, it's like it's trying to get there, and I love it. I love it. It's a the Amazon Basin is a great smoke. That's all I got to say. It's a great smoke, and if you get a chance to get one, you'll see what I'm talking about. So you know what that kind of reminds me of? What's that? Like when I was in high school, I dated this girl, and man, <sighs> she was just the greatest. I'm sorry, y'all. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. All right, I'm not going to tell me. that story. Forgive me for opening <laughs> that door. I didn't think, I thought he had got everything out of TPE, <laughs> but evidently he didn't. And on my no, last, no, no, go ahead. Go my ahead. last one. Oh, what you got there? Oh! Fine and Rare 2015, baby. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Fine and Rare 2015. And guess what? That was today. Because oh. you see what I got on? <laughs> wow. The exact same fit. That's the 15. Yeah, the 15. You know, that's not my favorite, though. I know my your favorite's the 19. 19. Yeah, my you favorite get a 19, is the 15. You should bring it to me. I don't know if I got one. <laughs> well, if you find I'll one. see. I'll All look right. and see. I have no problem with it. Okay, I cool. Know. So this week for me, I I mean, I have. you know what? I've actually smoked less cigars this week than I have. I can't believe. Well, you did say you were interviewing straight through. No, so. no, no. The whole time I smoked, that was last week. Yeah. This week. Okay. Last week. I smoked more cigars than I ever smoked. <laughs> In your life. <laughs> he said, I didn't believe I could catch up. <laughs> Let me tell you something. You know, my average is probably about eight. Didn't we say that today? And then, <laughs> but there in Vegas, uh-huh. it was like 12. Dude, <sighs> bro. when I got home, when I got home, the first day I was home, I only smoked five cigars that day. <laughs> I was like, can't do another one. <laughs> Your arm was like, I can't do this anymore. I can't. <laughs> I honestly, I honestly didn't know that I could actually get like cigared out. <laughs> I was cigared out. I was. I I didn't think that was possible. Not for you, dude. But and but here's the thing. I don't normally stay up those kind of hours. True. So that's why I don't smoke twelve <laughs> now. <laughs> you know, eight it, hours when he retires. <laughs> right. But no, I mean we weren't going to bed until like. 3 a.m. every night. <laughs> and then we were getting up at 7. <laughs> I told Dude. you I thought I was 20. <laughs> For real. <laughs> and you came back home, yeah, I'm in my 50s. <laughs> Dude. Well, I mean, but what my point is, when you're staying up from 7 to 3, you can smoke 12 cigars. <laughs> True. So that's why that happened. You got enough time to do it. Right. And, you know, when I'm interviewing the whole time, we're at mm-hmm. smoking cigars. Anyway, uh, I had a lot of great cigars and while I was at TPE, mm-hmm. and I got to say, I, I got to do a, a mention. You know what? I'll do that next week. All right. <laughs> well, if somebody sent me a cigar. Okay. And anyway, so this week, my number one uh-huh. was a 6x46 Fausto Tatawahe. Good smoke. Yeah. Good smoke. That When Zeka came through town, he gave me two. I smoked one then. And I smoked one yesterday. He Great. didn't say that they were two. No, 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 no. We were sitting in the back, and I was like, oh, dude, I can't smoke this right now because I really want to save it. And he was like, oh, well, here's another one. Okay. That way I could smoke it. It wasn't yours. <laughs> wasn't yours. <laughs> you know, you got you to gotta add that in. You got to ask those questions. I, I understand. You saw I did it like a police investigator. I just asked a question, just let him talk. <laughs> so if he told on himself. <laughs> hey, you know that uh, I don't have a problem telling on myself. We know I mean, that. <laughs> because if you don't know how I am, <laughs> shame on you. <laughs> Dude, we've let everybody know why we is. So my number two this week uh-huh. is a Wonderlust. Fantastic smoke. <laughs> right? <laughs> Great. Cigarette. Got you on Wonderlust. Oh, good, 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 good. Welcome back to Roma Craft, bro. <laughs> hey, man, I've been digging Roma Craft. Welcome lately. back to Roma Craft. And then my number one cigar this week, and you know, the last time I smoked it, I had a bad experience. Uh-huh. And so I let the other one sit in the humidor for, shoot, it's been 
five, six weeks. Ooh. And that was the Davidoff Escuro. You remember when yes, you had one? Yes. It was great, but mine, mine was, was no bueno. Mm, mm, mm. In fact, it just kind of like fell apart yeah. on me. Anyway. <laughs> like when it blew up. Uh, yeah. And so after sitting in the humidor for five, six weeks, I was like, you know what? Maybe it's ready. And I fired it up, and it was beautiful. It was ready. And, you know, I love that. It was number two yeah. on my list for the whole it year. Sure so, you know, sometimes that happens with cigars. And I'm not going to not smoke it with a one-time experience gotcha, like that. Gotcha, gotcha. I got to give them another, another chance. chance. And, yeah. I mean, that's to me. And I had somebody tell me they were like, ah, oh, that cigar is not any good. And I was like, well, I mean, you know, everybody has their haters. <laughs> True. I, I didn't know, you know. <laughs> True. So, <laughs> so let's, before we go. Mm-hmm. I just want to bring up one thing. What happened to the 49ers, man? Same thing happened to the Cowboys. No, no, the, no, 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 no. That's not anything close. The Cowboys <laughs> sucked from day one. <laughs> you guys. While well, we were three and y'all, five y'all, and y'all, made it y'all, there. Y'all made, a, y'all made a showing. Yeah. Y'all made a showing. It was what I had been saying since the Super Bowl of 2019. We have a quarterback that you just can't put your trust in. And here was, and I was talking to somebody yesterday about this was the perfect opportunity for him to showcase. Oh, 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 oh. I told you I was smoking cigars in a bar Uh, with a guy, and I didn't know who he was. We just, you know, when you see somebody smoking cigars, I'm going to let you finish that, but I got to jump in right here right quick because it has something to do with you. (laughs) Kind of. And uh, (laughs) anyway, I said, well, so what do you do? And he says, oh, I own a sports book here in Vegas. And I was like, oh, so, I mean, who are you picking for the Super Bowl? And he's like, I'm not picking for the Super Bowl yet, but I can tell you next week, put all your money on the Rams. Wow. And I was like, well, what about the other game? He's like, I ain't telling you that. I'm telling you on that game. Mm. Dude, like in the beginning of the game, I was like, no way. That guy was wrong. And then all of a sudden it was like, how did that happen? Here it is. You get the last drive of the game. But what was the spread on that game? It was three points. So it was a push. Yeah. So but he was wrong. He was wrong. Take that and suck it. It was <laughs> the last drive of the game. What every guy that grows up wanting to be a quarterback, this is your experience. You want to be have the ball in your hand, the last drive to make it work. Right. And what did he do? What did he do? Threw nut interception. It up, nut it up three <laughs> plays and threw an interception on the <laughs> third one. Right. Nut it up. I tell you what, I, I actually didn't watch that game. I was taking a nap, but you didn't miss nothing. Uh, I did go watch the Chiefs game, mm-hmm. and wow, wow! People wanted to say that our defense. I was like, no. When a defense can't can't get off the um, when when the defense is continually on the field, they're going to get quiet. You got tired. Look at the uh, the Bears from '85. The one game that they lost, they couldn't get off the field because the offense couldn't do it. It was kept three and out, three and out, three and out. And the Bears had the best defense I'd seen forever in 85. Oh, when they, yeah. when they, they couldn't get – every time you turn around, they was like, man, we right back on the field. You get tired. And that's what happened to us. We get the lead and then no more scoring. It's three and out, three and out. We go six drives, then you make dumb mistakes and you're out. Come on, dude. Yeah. They're tired, man. Well, and, I mean, and then they, they held them to a field goal the last. No, they scored. They scored the touchdown. But it was the point. You still had a chance. But here's the thing. Here's the thing. You thought they had a chance. Everybody. <laughs> last play. I mean, the last drive. No, I mean like six weeks ago. Oh, yeah. It's still. Like like six weeks ago, I had already like penciled the Cowboys out. <laughs> I'm like, all you guys are doing is getting the worst you draft did. pick. You did. You know. And it's, 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 it, it was just it was, it was was frustrating to me because when we got out, I was like, okay, here's his chance to prove that he's what – dude, you sat for five years behind Brady. Well, let me tell you something. So here's the Cowboy fans. <laughs> like, they're talking – Amongst themselves, because uh-huh. they're always in the media, no matter what, because yeah. that's Jerry Jones. But why? Like the play, the Super Bowl is not even over, and who's who's got all the media coverage? Yeah. Jerry Jones, McCarthy, his uh, Stephen Jones, mm-hmm. uh, what's his name? The offensive coordinator for the Kellen. Cowboys, Kellen Moore. And I'm like, you know what's funny about all that? 
is Jerry Jones knows how to keep the Cowboys in the media that we're not even in the picture, but we're in the conversation. Yeah. And you and for no, what? For what? Because for what? because Sean Payton retired. And that, that was also another thing yeah. that oh. got thrown in there. He's going to wait a year, and he's going to come to the Cowboys. They're going to the Super Bowl. Hold up. What? No, it doesn't. But here's the thing. Here's, the, what, here's what you're not getting, and here's what all you Cowboy fans don't get. If they keep McCarthy or they fire McCarthy, if they bring up Kellen Moore or they bring in Sean Payton, you none still of got, that matters. You still got Jerry it, Jones. None of it matters. You still got Jerry it's Jones. just hype. Yeah, it's coverage. I understand. I understand. Sell those jerseys. Sell those t-shirts. <laughs> sell those tickets. That's what that's, it's all about. That's what it's all about. You heard about the news with Hugh Jackson, right? Because you talking about the actor? No, Hugh oh. Jackson. He was the coach of uh, the Hugh, Browns. He Hugh. was the coach of the Browns. Okay. And he was with the Raiders. Hugh Jackman. Jackson. You talking about Jackman? That's uh, the, the, the Wolverine. Yeah, 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 yeah. I said Jackson, but anyway. Well, you know that's the way the Cowboys could win if we brought in the Wolverine. <laughs> <laughs> you get him out there running the ball. No, <laughs> the Wolverine just retired, Tom Brady, because <laughs> he went to Michigan. Uh. But anyway, Hugh Jackson. When uh, what's his name, Flores? That used to be the coach in Florida. He he filed this uh, suit against the NFL, talking about it was racism. They, they, they because he got a text from Belichick. The text was New York had already made their decision before he went to to interview. Mm-hmm. So he got pissed off about that. And filed him. Hugh Jackson came on and said, "Yeah, they paid us to uh, to take the season when I was coaching uh, my last year coaching the uh, the Browns." What do you mean take the season? Tank. Oh. To throw the season. He came out and said oh, that? Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Now everybody's talking about, well, wait a minute. Like you said, the bookie said, the game had not even been played yet. Throw your money on the Rams. <laughs> it's going to be played at SoFi Stadium, hey, which is the Rams' hey, own. Hey, hey, and Caroflo's career is <sighs> over. It's over. Okay. Because you but, saw my text. But, you but, saw my, but, my, but my I, message right hey, after. Hey, but if I put everything on the Rams and throw an <laughs> interception on the last, no, I, I, I'm not saying he did that. I, I'm just saying. Here's that. my thing. My my message right after we lost was, I'm thankful that next year I don't have to deal with Jimmy Garoppolo. And folks are like, what, you, what y'all gonna have uh, Trey Lance? I would rather die with a one with a two. two he ain't got number two years in the NFL learning. Who? Uh, Trey Lance. Then Garoppolo, who's got eight nine years and can't win it. Uh, can't win it. Yeah, I mean they paid them all that money, and we understand the, the contract stuff is nothing. It's null and void. When, when you get on the field, is where the truth comes to the fold. But bruh, they you had the perfect opportunity last drive, and what do you do? Three plays, three plays. You didn't even get to the fourth down because you threw hey, the interception. Hey, hey, but wait and a minute, did, did you wait see? A minute, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Now, what do you say to? Garoppolo, who says, hey, man, Mahomes did the same thing. Mahomes got a ring. <laughs> okay, <laughs> fair enough. <laughs> Mahomes got a ring. Sit down, Garoppolo. <laughs> and he got it against us. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> he got it against us. So I, I, I can't – there's no, there's no I mean, conversation dude, in how, that. How, how disappointed are you or how happy would you have been if instead of Garoppolo – you had like the quarterbacks that we see at Cincinnati, at Buffalo. Anybody to me is better than Josh Garoppolo. Allen, dude. dude. That dude's a superstar dude. in the making, dude. Uh, I don't even know the guy at Cincinnati. What's his name? Burt uh, Burroughs. but Burt Reynolds. No, Burroughs. <laughs> so Bur- the AFC has the new crop of quarterbacks. They got Mahomes, Burroughs, Josh Allen. They got Lamar Jackson. They got quarterbacks that can go out and w- they want the ball because they're going to do something. They're going to do something to show. Look at Burroughs. So, so who do you? Let's just go ahead and do a pick right now. Who wins the Super Bowl? I don't care, but I, I'm pulling for Seattle. I mean, uh, Cincinnati. I was going to say, you're not going to have a good shot no. if you're pulling uh, for Seattle, C- Cincinnati. <laughs> but why? Because of the team. Okay, they have everything. They have everything, and I still have a I still have an issue with the Rams and what they did to St. Louis. What they do? Same thing the Browns did in Cleveland. Oh yeah, yeah, but that's not these guys. <laughs> it is. It's not the players. That's who I'm. It's talking the about. owner. But you know what? I'm pulling for the Rams. Go ahead. And the only reason why is because you know what Stafford? He's been around for a long time. He's 
He's never had what he's had right now. So was Marino. Right. I would have loved to have seen Marino win a game. It doesn't matter how long you've been around. Right. It comes down to your owners and who they put around you. Look at look at freaking Brady last year. But 43 years old, and what they did was they put an all-star team around him, and they won. Mm-hmm. They won. And they've and that's done the, that now with that's, Stafford. That's what, and that's exactly what – but see, to me – because you're in a big TV market, you can do that stuff. They're not gonna. You you can't you can't get that that but same. But you can't. But here's the thing: you can take all of the pieces that they put around them, and you take out the quarterback and put in Garoppolo, and they're gonna lose. And they're gonna lose. <laughs> they're gonna lose. So I, I I'm would, sorry, they're gonna lose. Right. So Stafford's <laughs> one of those guys. I would like to see get a lose. ring before he's done. He's not. He doesn't have a lot of time left. And it's a. I mean, dude. I mean, look at Mahomes. Mahomes is one of the great ones that we have right now, and, he and he's only, not going. He's twenty six years old. Right? How old and is How old is Stafford? Burke, like thirty one? Yeah, he in his thirties. So, I mean, the young kid. I, I mean, I'm going to be happy as long as we have a good game. Oh, yeah. I mean, because I really don't care. But I would like to see Stafford win one before he retires, because he was in Detroit for his whole career. Same thing with Megatron. Yeah, Barry Sanders. All right, <laughs> should have got one. And he should have left Detroit. Sure, he couldn't. I know. He couldn't. He but. couldn't. Because when the, the money that he was worth, nobody was going to be able to pay that. Well, Jerry could have. Yeah. But, <laughs> but see, Jerry had Emmett, and he, had he Emmett. didn't going to nah. trash Emmett. But if, it yeah. would have been a huge – But I mean, we, oh, we Dude, if we, y'all have had right. Barry. But, 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 but the thing is, we didn't need Barry. We Ooh. love Barry, but we didn't need Barry. Lord, if y'all have had Barry – yeah, if y'all had Barry Aikman would have threw for five thousand yards one one season. You know why? Because everybody been trying to stop Barry <laughs> and yeah. Irvin and what's it, what was the other guy? Uh, Harper. Harper would have went crazy because they'd had eight nine people in the box trying to stop Barry, dude. And with that line you know, y'all you, had you know, back you, then too. You know, you know what's funny is I can name the Cowboy players of the nineties better than I can name the players we have now. <laughs> That's terrible. Man. Hey, because back then, hey, <laughs> they that was, meant something that was back then. Jimmy Johnson's yeah, team, not Jerry something. Jones. They meant something back then. That was the well, problem. Hey, that's going to wrap it up for this week's show, guys. We hope you enjoyed it, and uh, we'll be doing a few special things for the Light 'em Up crew members. Yes. We want to say thank you to our Patreon members, which is the LUC, baby. The Light 'em Up LUC. crew. LUC. And uh, we do a special show for them. And you know what? We've been slacking. On Okay, I've been slacking. Thank you. <laughs> and uh, you know what? We're fixing to ramp that up. We're going to bring you all some exclusive content. And so stay tuned. You're not going to want to miss it. It's not going to be the norm. So anyway, man, uh, thanks for hanging out outside. Okay. I know it's a little chilly. Probably got a little shrivel thing going on. Anyway. <laughs> Until next time, keep smoking. Boom.